Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel where I make your lives easier going over chemistry, biochemistry, all that fancy stuff. You know, helping you guys out with your undergrad, not grad, high school, MCAT, GRE, ACT, SAT, whatever. Just making it easier for you guys. Um, without further ado, we want to go into today's video. We're talking about protein structure. If you guys have not seen my other videos, go ahead and check that out. It may help you just quite a bit as I kind of, you know, kind of breeze over this. I don't want to make anything too crazy for you guys. Um, so I just want to start off with a basic recap of what proteins are. And we know that proteins are these macromolecules that um, occur in our body, chemical reactions actually. So they're important in structure, uh, metabolism, signaling and receptors is very important overall for chemical reactions that happen and these proteins are made up of something called amino acids as we see here and these amino acids actually are made up of units we have an uh, amino group we have a alpha carbon an R group and then this carboxylic acid which I like to call CU right and these are what make up proteins once these amino acids come together, they form something called peptide bonds. If I can just go ahead and bring that up for you guys, which is right here, peptide bond formation, right? So again, these amino acids, they can go through a reaction. And this reaction, again, is called a, you guys got it, dehydration reaction, where amino acid, oh no, not that, <laughs> amino acid one, an amino acid two bond together, a water is released, and you form something called a peptide bond. And in this case, this is called a dipeptide. And then also, this reaction can happen again and again and again until if you look down below, I'm drawing out all these circles are amino acids, right? Until a whole bunch of amino acids come together and you form something called a polypeptide chain. And these polypeptide chains are made up of multiple, multiple, multiple different amino acids, which can see, be seen right here. And in the last video, we talked about this, where we have all these different amino acids. And these amino acids can be something like alanine, glycine, glutamine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, proline, valine, serine, tyrosine, tryptophan, cysteine, aspartic acid, asparagine, and so on and so forth. Oh, man, you guys have to leave me a like for that one. I am just trying to get better at naming all of them as quick as I can. So it looks like I need to work on it, too. And I have been mentioned in other videos, these polypeptide chains, it looks like a snake, right? Just can form this long, long, long chain. And at the very far right end is the C terminus. Terminus. Hope you guys can see that S. And then at the other end, we have the N terminus. So this is ideally the structure of a polypeptide chain. And again, to recap the recap, recap, <laughs> we do have proteins, large macromolecules, made up of something called amino acids. Amino acids are then held together by something called peptide bonds. These peptide bonds form through a dehydration reaction where a water is released and a peptide bond is formed. These amino acids can then form many more peptide bonds and form a polypeptide chain. Now, I know what you guys are asking. Okay, Dre, it's long peptide chain. What happens next? Well, they can go into certain protein structures, right? So the first one we have here is called a primary structure as seen right here. And that's just a sequence of amino acids. We can jump over to our right and we see here we have a glycine, serine, histidine, leucine, valine, alanine, leucine, and a valine. Just forming this long peptide chain. Just a sequence of amino acids out by their, uh, just by their names. That's it. Single. Next, we have a secondary protein structure, which is right here. And in secondary protein structures, we have hydrogen bonding. These hydrogen bonds between the backbones causes the amino acids to fold into a repeating pattern. 
And um, the backbone of an amino acid is just this right here. So again, we have the R group here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my pin. We have the R group here, and this would be considered, let's see, this would be considered the backbone. And then the R group, of course, is the functional group, the, the actual part of that amino acid that does the reaction. So again, in secondary structure, we have these beta pleated sheets and alpha helices, fancy, right? Helices. It's alpha helix, but plural alpha helices. Um, these function form through the hydrogen bonds, which happen uh, between the backbones of these amino acids. Then we have tertiary protein structure, which is simple as 3D. These polypeptides get so long that they just start to just fold and like crunch up like paper creating these 3D proteins and we'll see more examples of some of these proteins, okay? And then last we have quaternary protein structure, which are proteins consisting of more than one amino acid chain. So we know that we can have an amino acid chain this can be this can actually be one protein right here that I draw. This can be one protein, right? But then what can happen is we can have another polypeptide be formed right here, right? And then maybe another one here. And then another one here. And I know it looks, just looks like I'm just drawing up squigglies, but that's really what it is. These polypeptide chains fold together due to all these different reactions. Think of like crumbled up paper or like wrapped spaghetti. And an example of that is hemoglobin as they just kind of clump together, forming something called subunits. So you can have one subunit here, a second one, third, and then a fourth one right here. So if we go on to the next slide, we're going back to primary structure. An example of that is insulin, where you have two, um, two single polypeptide sequences as seen right, ooh, no, as seen right up here, and then the second one here. And uh, just to kind of go into what insulin is, we know that insulin is something that's uh, is actually a protein that is released by the pancreas. And in a healthy pancreas, you do produce insulin as you see here, this blue small ball here, this blue one. And what happens is, as glucose comes into the body, we have this insulin that will bind to an insulin receptor, which activates the protein, right? And this glucose can be broken down. However, in type 1 and type 2 diabetes, we do have the pancreas. However, it does not form any insulin. Those small dots are insulin. Does not, does not, does not, does not, does not produce the insulin. Therefore, you have high glucose levels and this causes diabetes because there's no insulin to be able to attach to this insulin receptor and break down that glucose. Next, we have type 2 diabetes, which is right here. And what we have is we have insulin that is produced. However, when glucose does enter, the cell fails to respond to insulin properly. So I bring this up just to kind of give an overall basis for why proteins are important. Again, in signaling structure, uh, chemical reactions, and many more enzymes. And this gives you an idea of a primary structure. Insulin is considered a primary structure as seen above right up here. And it's importance in the body, correct? So I want to go on to the next structure. And the next structure we have is secondary structure. Secondary structures can be beta pleated sheets or they can be an alpha helix or I like to say alpha helices. <laughs> it, it just sounds so fancy. I wish... But in this case, alpha helix, whatever. <laughs> so in secondary structure, they can form beta sheets and then um, alpha helix, alpha helices. <laughs> and so for second structure, um, these structures are actually formed by hydrogen bonding of other amino acids. So I have this down here, which is basically a part of this blown up, right? 
And what we see here is hydrogen bonding between this amino acid up here and then this amino acid right here. So um, again, this is the backbone of this amino acid. And then we see the hydrogen here forming a hydrogen bond. And this just continues and continues. We see another one here. And then I'm just going to put HB for hydrogen bond. And we can just say this is the same, this is the same. We'll just see hydrogen bonds going across the way, forming these sheets, right? These, these arrow thingies up here. And uh, in biochemistry, chemistry, we like to use schematics. Um, Realistically, it probably doesn't look like this, but for the sake of visuals, this gives a good representation for beta pleated sheets. And then also we have here, they can also form these spirals called alpha helices. And again, this is due to hydrogen bonding and uh, the special interactions between the backbone of, um, of these amino acids, okay? So now for tertiary structure, I have it written here already. Some a ghost must have written this here because they got it completely right. We say 3D. That's what I like to call it. Just straight up 3D. And um, this is done by the interactions between the R groups, right? Um, there's ionic bonding, dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, and many more. So down below, I do have two cysteines, which are which is an amino acid, and you can see they connect here. This is called the disulfide bridge, which can be seen right here, right? So again, these tertiary structures get created by the interactions between the R groups, and I will make a separate video later talking about more specifically drawing each amino acid and their different uh, side chains or R groups because that's where the interactions happen. That's where the function happens. So we do see a disulfide bond here. We see an ionic bond here. We see a hydrophobic interaction here and then hydrogen bond. So all these interactions kind of glue together parts of that polypeptide and form a 3D shape. Um, more specifically, this hydro, uh, this hydrophobic interaction that happens here, um, this is due to um, some of the amino acids being nonpolar. So what they do is they cluster together and they end up being inside of that protein. So this leaves a lot of the hydrophilic amino acids on the outside surrounding water molecules like we see in this hydrogen bond here. So now if we move on to the quaternary structure, we have an example, and this is hemoglobin. And I always like this because I want to keep this real simple because uh, there will be a later video talking about what these things are here and more about, oh, no, not there, <laughs> right here. That one was hiding. More about the alphas and the betas. But for quaternary structure, again, what we have are multiple polypeptides. So we have we can have one polypeptide here, and then we can have another one form right here, and then another right here. Then go crumbled paper, then another right here, forming these subunits. So if we have subunit one, we have subunit two, three, and then four. And this is kind of similar to what's going on with hemoglobin where you have four different subunits making up that whole protein. So just to recap, we have quaternary structure. An example is hemoglobin, which transports oxygen, uh, uh, transports oxygen into the bloodstream. We have tertiary structure. We think of interactions between all the R groups, right? Continuing to fold and make this 3D structure. We have secondary structure, which there are interactions between the backbones of these amino acids via hydrogen bonding, forming beta pleated sheets and alpha helices. Then we have primary structure. An example of is insulin, where it's just basically a basic sequence of amino acids. So I hope this video helped, guys. Um, more videos will be coming soon where we talk more about 
other macromolecules, you know, carbohydrates, fatty acids, um, and much more. So go ahead, leave a like, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.